This is the, the part we have to cut the backing out. So, um, a little nervous. Um, I'm going to try to use a razor. See if I can cut through the plastic so I don't have to make a mess with like a Dremel. Um, who knows? Let's see what happens here. Actually, not too bad. It's out. <clears throat> so, here it is. Once you get it out, I didn't film it, but there's like a little clip on the back of that one. It just like holds a wire. So, you can see it. So, this is that. Um, I don't know if there's like a clean way to get that thing off without just like ruining it, kind of like I did. But, I mean, it just holds a wire, so I don't think it's too big of a deal. Um, but anyway, another reason that I wanted to use the razor blade, and it took a while, I was, it took about a million swipes. But, I mean, you see the edges are way cleaner. And if I ever wanted to put it back in there, it's going to fit way cleaner than it would if I used some kind of Dremel or something. So I could just put a little glue on there and glue it right back in there and... It should hold nice, um, but who knows? I mean, I might never go back, and but it wasn't like it was impossible to do it that way. So, and it makes way less of a mess. I don't have anything to clean up. Whereas a Dremel, you'd have little plastic pieces all over the damn place. Um, so, I guess I am in uh, the home stretch here. So I just got to put everything in. All right, got the radio in. Um, I didn't film it because there was no benefit of you guys watching me fumble with the freaking wires for so long. So basically just read the instructions and just try to make sense of it. Um, see what needs plugged in where. There's a 50% there's a chance I might need to take it out and... Uh, change something or plug something in I missed but I mean this part's pretty straightforward just just plug it in and uh, go at it so I'll be back once uh, the whole the whole thing's in I guess all right so it's a week later and you might be wondering why it's a week later well and that's because Yep. A whole lot of nothing's happening when you turn it on. So I called uh, Skosh and I talked to one of their tech support people and they sent me a new box. So I get to uh, replace this. They're thinking they sent me a faulty unit, um, so I don't know. We'll see. So I will replace um, both this guy and as well as this thing. So uh, I guess I'll be back after I swap out everything, and uh, we'll we'll hope that that does the trick. All right, got it all hooked up. The new. The new unit so I switched the box and also the screen so let's see I hooked up the battery cross my fingers I see something there we go try to find out a glare 
The radio's on. Cool. Good stuff. All right, let me button this all back up. And uh, then we can go through and actually set this thing up and make sure everything's good. All right, I didn't really put it all together, but I at least put it where it belongs. So let's turn this thing on. And the first thing I notice is um, that sound, instead of coming out of the speakers like it normally used to, is now coming out of like the cluster area. So it's it's kind of a I guess a cheaper sounding tone. It's you know it's not actual speakers like car speakers doing. It's just the little speaker in the in the cluster. I imagine the turn signals and the backup sensors, if you have those, will also come out of that. I'm testing the turn signal now. I can't tell if that's actually normal. If it normally comes out of there or not, but. But either way, that's 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 a thing to note. Um, so we got a radio here. So I'm just gonna do English on the radio. Okay. All right. Well, the instructions are kind of useless. They say just refer to the operation manual, which I have no other manual, so I'll just assume it's standard. See if the radio works. Nice and static. The Maryland Terrapins in Big Ten play. Penn State seven and four against the spread as a road favorite since 2016. On the money line, Penn State minus it works. 45. Maryland plus one door and a sliding glass door for my back patio. The folks at Pella steered me towards the best they had to fit my needs. And it All right. Um, so it's enough of the radio. That's not what you're here for. But I mean, I didn't. As you saw, I turned it on. I didn't have to touch anything down there and it's the radio is working fine so that's pretty cool um let's see what all the settings are for this thing so i'm looking through the manual here um so this says how to use the ac i mean that's pretty um but uh makes a nice tone for you Pretty responsive, pretty works pretty good. Alright, that's not bad. I like that. Um, so let's go into the menu. Okay, so we'll do vehicle settings. Time and date. Get my phone out. See what time it is. Okay. Yes. Six. Forty six is not year two thousand. So these are like um, they're not capacitive touch, they're like the push touch. Which I mean for as much as you'll be touching these, I don't think that's really a huge deal. What the hell is the twenty seven?
cool now or we'll do okay shows to the temperature on there Distance units, miles, Fahrenheit, all good there. ITC settings. So that's. So you can set your parking brake source to the brake or speed. So that's pretty nice. Um, so that'll matter for your radio. Like when you do Android Auto, for example, um, it won't let you like type in addresses from the maps if your parking brake isn't on but if you have an automatic like my car you, know, you might want to make fun of it um, I mean I don't really use the, the actual handbrake I just use I just you know we'll stop or put it in park so it's nice that I can just not have to now use the handbrake if I didn't previously um, so Enhanced park pilot. I'm assuming that's the parking guide. It's kind of all we got as far as options. Um, so that's not too hard to set up. You can change the volume of the touch. I think that's what comes with this fine. So brightness you can set for each thing. Automatic is probably fine, I would guess. Um, cool, so that's about it. So let's see if I put this in park, even though I'm not on. Cool, so I got my camera showing on the radio. And I got my sensors down there. It even looks like a, an image of a Mustang, a blue one, but it's got my, uh, my sensors showing. So that's pretty cool. And it shows my guidelines. Um, it has the, um, the the lines. I can't turn my wheel right now because it's it's locked. But uh, I'm assuming those are the factory lines. They definitely look like it. So that's cool. So I think that's about it uh, for now. Once I get this thing all patched up, I'll probably, you know, give an overall thing on it. But uh, as far as setting it up, I think that's all we got. So that's really not too bad at all. I mean, I hope I was helpful for you guys uh, if you're thinking about getting this. I'll definitely post a review of it after some time and, and let you know what, you know, what it's like to live with and, and uh, how I like it over the original radio. But uh, as of now, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It, it kind of sucks I got a dud because that gave me a bad impression of it. And if you watched my unboxing video, the screen was actually, you know, loose. It was kind of dangling there. So I'm wondering if, if that's something happened in shipping then that, that kind of, you know, broke a connection or something. Who knows? But, uh, but I mean, I'm good now. <laughs> I'm working now. So, so uh, thanks, guys.